Behind me is the Eureka Reef, discovered by gold prospectors 160 years ago. It was a truly spectacular outcrop of white quartz, stained orange from the minerals in it, 10 metres wide and rising high above the ground. What led the miners here was gold-rich gravels known as placer deposits in the surrounding gullies. But it was here, in this beautiful quartz reef, that they found the source of the placer gold. The gold was embedded in the quartz in small but visible grains, like in this sample here. This type of gold-bearing quartz is typical of what I'm familiar with here in southeastern Australia. So after travelling halfway around the world to California, I was surprised to find that the gold deposits there look so familiar. And this is the same for many of the gold load districts around the world. The veins look the same and even the chemistry is similar. To earth scientists, this suggests they may have formed in the same way. By 1998, a lot more was known about these distant gold deposits. So an international team could now draw some conclusions about their likely origins. I met with Dr. Rich Goldfarb on his visit to Victoria. He was a member of the team and they decided to give all these similar gold deposits a new common name. We call them orogenic gold deposits because they're related to orogeny or the mountain building process. Anytime we have a mountain building process along the margin of a continent, we're going to form orogenic gold deposits as part of that process. Rich Goldfarb became fascinated with gold working for the United States Geological Survey. In the 1980s, he was looking for new deposits in the Alaskan coastal mountain ranges by using thousands of geochemical soil samples. This is a routine job, but the results set him thinking about how Alaskan gold had formed. These deposits at the time I started were actually were called epithermal gold, which is gold that forms at very shallow levels, often from circulation of surface waters but I started looking at the distribution of the gold. And those type of deposits, epithermal deposits, are associated with granites. But the gold wasn't associated with granites. When I plotted up all the gold in stream sediments and glacier moraines, the gold showed a distribution with metamorphic rocks. It was mainly in rocks that had been metamorphosed at moderate temperatures and pressures. And that suggested to me there might be a different type of model and it might be related to metamorphism. Other researchers also realised that metamorphism, gold deposition and orogeny were often closely related in many quartz load type deposits. So the name orogenic gold has stuck. Metamorphism might be the key, but where did the gold come from in the first place? Where do you get the gold? It has to be in the rocks to move during metamorphism. Most of us would argue that gold comes into the rocks during seafloor processes. If you look at sediments of volcanic rocks on the ocean floor, they often have very disseminated grains of pyrite or iron sulfide. There's often a high background, perhaps 100 parts per billion gold in those pyrite grains. As the ocean floor is moved towards the edge of the continent, subducted and what's called, what we call often accreted or added to the continental margin, that those oceanic sediments with the pyrite are then heated up during metamorphism. So the gold in that pyrite is mobile along with any water or CO2, carbon dioxide, that is in other minerals. So that fluid and that gold move together during the metamorphism. Metamorphism occurs when seafloor rocks are thickened and deeply buried by deformation. With burial, 
The gold-bearing rocks are subjected to rising pressure and temperature, causing a dramatic chemical change. The rocks then release a gold-rich metamorphic fluid. When we heat a rock to 4, 450 degrees along a continental margin, we change 5 to 6% of that rock volume to the fluid phase. That's a hell of a lot of fluid being produced. To create this amount of metamorphic fluid, you need a big engine. So what is the earth process that can do this? The unifying process is actually plate tectonics. We, up till 25 years ago, we could not understand the distribution of gold. But as our understanding of plate tectonics grew, we started to being able to understand the spatial and temporal distribution of gold on the planet. We realize along active continental margins where we have collision of terrains, and then after collision, the terrain strikes slip or tend to move apart, and we have earthquakes, we form orogenic gold deposits. The youngest examples of these collisions are continental margins of the Pacific. Around the Pacific, collisions created deposits along the Asian and American margins between 170 to 50 million years ago. In North America, the driving force for collision lay beneath the continental margin, where subduction pushed oceanic sediments against the continent. Those reflect young collisions along the margins of continents, metamorphism, and mountain building along the edge of continents, and the formation of young orogenic gold deposits. These relatively young collisions can help us explain the origin of more ancient gold deposits, like in Australia or Asia. Plate tectonics went way back in Earth's history. So if we look at other gold belts of the world, we have other collisional margins that are ancient examples of Western North America. Much of Central Asia into Western China is an analog to what we see in Western North America. So from what we learned in Western North America, from the very young collisions in Alaska, we can now look at Central Asia and say, that's what happened 250 to 500 million years ago, and that's why we have all these gold deposits spread across Central Asia. And the orogenic model fits my homeland Australia like a glove. Like Asia, this place where I'm now standing once lay next to a continental margin. And the rocks here were completely smashed in a monumental collision as a tectonic plate pushing from the east deformed and raised these rocks from the seafloor. And just as in Asia and Alaska, orogenic gold was formed during this collision. I'm 300 metres below the peak and the gold bearing loads that we find around here were injected into these rocks during or just after that major collision. And this timing is one of the defining characteristics of orogenic gold deposits. It happened here in southeastern Australia more than 400 million years ago. Collision led to metamorphism, which in turn created these veins. And they're still being mined here today. No doubt about it, the Victorian gold deposits are just a classic example of orogenic gold deposits. Their structure, their mineralogy, the fact that they have large plaster fields along with the load fields, they are a world-class orogenic gold deposit province.